Today we want to talk about relationships and how to set them in Microsoft Backside. First I want to show you a set of relationships that are already established here. And basically there are three types of relationships. There's one-to-one, -one, one to many, and many to many. Now, a typical relationship will look like this here that I sh I'm showing on the screen. It'll have a one side, and then it'll have the infinity symbol to represent the many side. There are also variations on the one to many, and you see this arrow here. Basically, it's a one to many, but there doesn't have to be a match in the other table in this in this situation. It's what they call an outer join. So let's take a look at both of these. So if I right click and I go to edit relationships, you'll see that in my edit relationships button that the dialog box will show the customer ID linked to customer ID in the customer's table linked to the table customer context. So here table customer context is the many side or the right side table customers is the one side or the left side. Now the one side will always appear on top or on the left as you draw your relationships between the two tables. Now here it says we we're going to enforce referential integrity and I'm going to do a whole video on the referential integrity views here in a short bit. But suffice it for now that by enforcing referential integrity you actually get to see the infinity sign here and the one sign there so you know the one side and the many side. If there was no referential integrity chosen here, and if I click OK, what you'll just see is a straight line. And really that's just a one-to-one -one relationship. Everything on the table customer's side will be joined to everything that it finds that match in the table customer context. But without referential integrity enforced, there's no guarantee that either side will have data when you look up a customer contact, for example, will it have a customer? Well, the reason why you put in referential integrity is to make sure that that is always the case, that when you see a record for a customer contact, you'll know exactly where that customer contact came, which customer actually generated that contact, okay? So the next thing that we need to look at is the join type. So the join type determines which side of the join you want to appear. Now, as it currently sits, we're going to only show records where both the tables have an entry. If either table ha does not have an entry, the record as a whole will just drop out of any query that we put together. So any query that we have supporting a form will just not show a record that has, doesn't have a match on one side or the other. Well, sometimes that's not desirable. So let's say in this case, we have a customer that hasn't referred anybody to the co company, so they don't have any customer contacts from that customer. So therefore, we would want to show a situation where we have a customer, but we don't, they just don't have customer contacts. So we still want to show the data in that case. So in this case, we choose number two, include all records from table customers, and only the records in table customer contacts where the joint fields are equal with each other. So in other words, if you had a, a customer contact with a first name, last name, and so forth, those records would be blank in your form if you had the outer join set here. And the outer join appears with an arrow. So when we click on it, it's a, it shows the arrow going to the many side over here. And generally, you would not ever see a join done properly that goes from one to the many and has the arrow on the one side. That, that just wouldn't make sense from a data standpoint. Now, you notice that we've got a customer's table here, and we have a one-to-many join here with sales. So we can have customers in our database, such as maybe we acquired a mailing list or something, and the customer hasn't generated any sales yet. So we can have a customer in the table without a sale associated with that customer. So we have a one-to-many, in other words, one customer can have many different sales. And we have an outer join here, which says that we're going to show all customers, but only sales where the customer has a sale. So, and then there are several other types of joins. 
We have a salesperson here that may not have made any sales at all, but they're in the salesperson table. So we don't want to exclude the salesperson just because they haven't made a sale yet. So that's how your table is constructed here with the outer joints and the one-to-many relationships. Now, there are several times when you have a situation where you have a one-to-one -one relationship that you want to maintain. Sometimes you have a bit of data that you always want to link in a certain way. And on rare occasions, you'll put together a one-to-one -one relationship and you just link them straight across. All the records that match show up and you're good to go. Now, the other interesting one is the many-to-many -many relationship. Now, many-to-many -many cannot actually be modeled in Microsoft Access. You actually have to do it with two sets of joins with what they call either a switch table or a union table in between those two other tables. So here's the situation. We have a student and we have clubs. A student can join several clubs and a club can have several students. So we're not in a situation where we can join students and clubs directly together because simply that type of relationship wouldn't be a valid one. But we do want to be able to link and find students who belong to certain clubs and vice versa. The club wants to put together a roster of students. So what we do here is we join student with student in our switch table. Uh, we'll enforce referential integrity here and create this. And then we'll join club to club here and we'll enforce referential integrity there so that we can see the join. And now the one side the student ID, in other words, there's only going to be one student with a unique student ID or one club with a unique club ID, but you can have several students in a club or a student can join multiple clubs. Now, the way that this data ends up working is this table does all your work for you. So here's the way the data would look. For example, here we have Jeffrey Walker, okay? Jeffrey Walker has joined club three and club two. So club two and three up here, he has joined the horticulture club and the photography club. So this switch table joins 12 with three and two, 12 being the student with three and two being the two clubs. Well, we also see that club number three here, the photography club has another member up here, six, who is Edgar Mingus. So you can see that this table here does have multiple members, shows those two. We also have, oh, we also have a three up here. So student ID number two, Michael Bartle, Barty, um, also is a member of that club. So you've got three students mem in, as members of the club, and you also have Jeffrey Walker having joined two of those clubs. So that's how you reference and work with a many-to-many -many relationship. So I hope the information has been valuable to you. And I hope that also that you'll grow, help me grow the channel by hitting the subscribe button. Talk to you later. Thanks.